how bad is our economy? Just take a look at the headlines in the Wall Street Journal today. Right there on the front page, the worst financial crisis since the 1930s with no end in sight. And a quote from the Washington Post, what, are we, what we are witnessing, that is, may be the greatest destruction of our financial wealth that the world has ever seen. And it continued today as the federal government wrote another check to spur global markets. Today's tab, $55 billion. Still, the Dow spiked 410 points today after a report the feds may create an organization to deal with with all the bad debt out there, out there that is, like the one that solved the SNL crisis in the 1980s and 90s. Any chance that's at least a step in the right direction? We've got a lot of questions. Say hello to the watchdog on Wall Street, Christopher Markowski. He's the host of a radio show with the same name. All right, Christopher, first of all, explain to us this government entity that possibly may be created to hold bank debt. And can we can I put some credit card debt there too? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Christopher, what, is something like that just the beginning to the solution, or is that not the right way to go? Well, I, the beginning, I think the beginning with the government getting involved was back in March around St. Patrick's Day when we were told that, okay, we're going to step in and we're going to bail out Bear Stearns, and ah, the coast is going to be clear, sure, party on, everybody. And then we got AIG, and we've got, well, we're not going to take care of Lehman Brothers. We'll let that one go. I, I think investors have got a little bit of whiplash right now, and they're concerned because I don't quite honestly think that the government understands the full extent of what's going on and this is why you see a mass exodus a mass rush to the doors and this is why uh, mutual funds are down closed-end funds are down stocks are down and people are a little bit nervous okay while the government's figuring that out what should we as consumers as individuals what should we be doing well, Rochelle, it all depends on what type of investor you are. Okay. If you're someone that, uh, if you're someone who's smart and you're in your 20s and your 30s and your 40s and you're putting money away on a regular basis and you're, you're doing dollar cost averaging and investing for the long term, keep doing what you're doing. If you've got a solid financial plan in place, these things are going to happen. And Rochelle, I mean, remember the dot-com collapse not sure. too long ago? I mean, these things are going to happen again because we seem to be dealing with the, the problems by doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So we're going to have these, these, these sell-offs. We're going to have these market crashes. But I'm here to tell you, uh, it's not Armageddon. The world doesn't end. This time is no different than the last time. All right, Chris, stay right there. We've got people burning up the phone lines. So we're going to give out the number again, 1-877-TEL-HLN. Stick around, people. Uh, we're going to take your phone calls. The experts, not me. Chris is ready to take your phone calls. So stick around. Private, so please keep that in mind. And we'll try to let him... Welcome back. We're talking about your money right now with our guest, Christopher Markowski. He's a host of the radio show called The Watchdog of Wall Street. All right, Christopher, we do have a caller right now. Carolyn is calling from Missouri. She's got a bit of a comment. It's kind of funny, but I think she's kind of serious, too. Carolyn, go for it. Oh, yes. I'm just so comforted that the president has said that uh, we have an adjustment going on. I am bundling up all my bills, and I'm going to send them to the White House and uh, ask the president if he'll adjust this. Hmm. Well, I, Carolyn looks Thanks, a little Carolyn. bit. <laughs> Carolyn sounds a little bit bitter about her situation, and that's unfortunate. And I, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, but the reality of the situation is the president doesn't control the economy. The president doesn't control oil prices. The president doesn't have control of any of this stuff. The president, in fact, is not going to get anybody a job who needs a job. That's all up to us. Um, this, though, yes. as, as you're saying that then why are the candidates campaigning so hard if you're saying the president doesn't really play a big role in all this? Oh, uh, Rochelle, you know as well as I do it's a <laughs> political season. You've been around the block. You know this. Come on. They're going to say everything and anything out there to get themselves elected, and I am going to be the almighty healer and fixer of everything out there. You know, but, you know, the president is going to have to work with Congress. And you take a look at the, you know, I think it's a terrible relationship that we have between Washington, D.C. and Wall Street. The, you know, the, the biggest parties being thrown at the RNC and the DNC were courtesy of Freddie and Fannie and uh, big brokerage firms and the automakers. Everybody's got their hand out. You see the type of money they give to politicians. And we don't get any real type of reform. Rochelle, we want to fix Wall Street. You want to do away with all these problems. And you know what? We need to break up these big investment banks. We need to break up these big banks. They're conflicted. People are getting ripped off and scammed because they've got so many different levels of business all under the same roof. How is it okay 
that a firm is allowed to manage mom and pop's money on, on Main Street mm -hmm. and then also trade stocks for their own account or create companies or create collateralized debt obligations. If we separate all these entities and allow some real competition back to the industry like they did when they broke up AT&T, good things will happen. All right, Christopher. Well, the president did step up and say something today. I'm not sure. Well, well it remains to be seen whether or not anybody was comforted by it, but let's go ahead and listen to that, and then we'll get to one of our other callers, Kate, who's holding on. So keep holding on, Kate. Let's listen to the president now. As our recent actions demonstrate, my administration is focused on meeting these challenges. The American people can be sure we will continue to act to strengthen and stabilize our financial markets and improve investor confidence. And, and how much money is it going to cost us to strengthen the economy, Christopher? Oh, hmm. we're, going, we're getting into some big dollar amounts right now. I don't know if I can count that high, but okay. you know, in Washington, D.C., I think that they confuse you know, the, you know, millions, billions, and trillions. I don't think that they know the difference between it. But some of this as well has to do with uh, Americans making very poor choices in regards to handling their money, going out and buying uh, homes they can't afford, stuff they can't afford, piling debt on top of debt on top of debt. I mean, I see it all the time in the business that I'm in. People calling me up, I want to start a financial plan, I want to start saving for my future, and they got twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in credit card debt for stuff they don't need. Well, Christopher, I'm going to have to wrap you there, but it seems like it's not just consumers that did that. It seems like businesses made a lot of poor oh, you're, decisions uh, Rochelle, as well. you're 110% right. They made horrible decisions, and that's, that's why I'm, yes. I'm going to have to wrap you there, but thank you so oh, much okay. for your time. Appreciate it. You got it. it. Have a good one.